The really surprising thing is just how quickly the outbreak appears to have exploded. This isn't a dress rehearsal. This has the full potential to become a pandemic. You must stay at home. If we lose, we will regret it. December 2019. Cases of a mysterious illness are reported in the city of Wuhan in China and connected to one of the city's wet markets. By January, at least 59 people in China have now become ill with what appears to be a mysterious pneumonia. The World Health Organization reports Chinese authorities have identified a completely novel coronavirus as the cause of the illness and sequenced its genome, a crucial step for tracking the outbreak less than a month after the first person fell ill. 11th of January. The first death is recorded. By the 21st of January, six people have now passed away after being infected with the new coronavirus. Cases begin to appear in Japan, Thailand, South Korea and Taiwan. Wuhan is put under a strict lockdown by the Chinese government. All travel into and out of the city is prohibited. Researchers in China capture the first electron microscope image of the new coronavirus. On the 25th of January, the first case of coronavirus in Europe is confirmed in France. At the end of the month, the World Health Organization declares a public health emergency of international concern. Let's be serious in using the window of opportunity we have. We shouldn't lose this opportunity. If we lose, we will regret it. The first cases of the virus are detected in the UK and US President Donald Trump restricts entry into the US from China. I called for a ban. In mid-February, the World Health Organization names the disease caused by the coronavirus COVID-19, or Coronavirus Disease 2019. The first death is recorded outside Asia, in France, a Chinese tourist in Paris. Throughout February, Iran, Italy and the US all record their first deaths. On the 5th of March, the first death is recorded in the UK. Italy becomes the first European country to impose a nationwide lockdown. On the 11th of March, the World Health Organization declares COVID-19 a pandemic. And we're deeply concerned, both by the alarming levels of spread and severity, and by the alarming levels of inaction. Today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. Soon, the EU shuts its borders to the rest of the world. There's early hope as the world's first human trial of a COVID-19 vaccine begins, an mRNA vaccine developed by the US biotechnology company Moderna. By mid-March, Italy's death toll overtakes China's and the UK follows other European nations in entering a nationwide lockdown. Hi folks, I want to bring you up to speed with something that's happening today, which is that I've developed mild symptoms of the coronavirus. In April, global cases reach one million. The US records the most daily deaths from COVID-19 of any country so far. New York City is particularly hard hit, with hospitals in the city overwhelmed. On the 8th of April, lockdown is lifted in Wuhan, China. In May, restrictions begin to ease in some parts of Europe as infections slow. But in the Americas, particularly Brazil, epidemics continue to grow. By the end of the month, daily infections in Latin America overtake those in Europe or the US, with more than 2 million cases across the region. COVID-19 deaths in the US pass 100,000 by the end of May, the highest number of deaths any country has recorded so far. 
The steroid dexamethasone becomes the first drug found to save lives in COVID-19 patients. After the easing of restrictions in many countries, at the end of June, the World Health Organization warns cases are starting to rise again in Europe. Resurgence that if left unchecked, will push health systems to the brink once again in Europe. In July, the World Health Organization acknowledges emerging evidence that the coronavirus may be spread indoors through tiny particles in the air. The use of face coverings has been compulsory in public spaces in many countries for some time now. And on the 24th of July, it becomes mandatory to wear one in shops and supermarkets in England as well. In August, Brazil's COVID-19 death toll passes 100,000. Russia announces approval of its Sputnik V COVID-19 vaccine before large-scale human trials, prompting concern among international researchers. The first case of coronavirus reinfection is detected in Hong Kong. On the 29th of September, the world reaches the sad milestone of 1 million deaths from COVID-19. In October, India becomes the third country in the world to reach more than 100,000 deaths. Many countries in Europe tighten restrictions to try to stem surging cases. Ireland becomes the first European country to impose a second nationwide lockdown. England follows suit two weeks later. Stay at home, protect the NHS and save lives. November brings much-needed optimism. Pfizer and BioNTech announced that results from Phase 3 trials show their mRNA vaccine is more than 90% effective at preventing symptomatic COVID-19. A flurry of positive vaccine results follow over the next few weeks, including Moderna's mRNA vaccine and a viral vector-based vaccine developed by the University of Oxford and AstraZeneca. Mexico's COVID-19 death toll passes 100,000. On the 2nd of December, the UK government becomes the first in the world to authorise the Pfizer and BioNTech vaccine, and the first people take part in the UK's mass vaccination programme days later. But soon afterwards, a new variant of the coronavirus that may be associated with faster spread is identified as a cause for concern in Kent in the UK. Other variants have been detected around the world, including in South Africa and Brazil. At the beginning of 2021, UK hospitals are at risk of being overwhelmed by surging COVID-19 cases. Evidence suggests this is partly due to the faster spreading coronavirus variant first detected in Kent. Two million people are reported to have died from COVID-19 since the pandemic began. And on the 26th of January, the UK becomes the first European country to reach more than 100,000 deaths from COVID-19. It's hard to compute the sorrow contained in that grim statistic. By the month's end, more than 7 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine have been given to people in the UK but that's compared to just 25 in the West African state of Guinea, highlighting the unequal distribution of COVID-19 vaccines globally. A World Health Organization report suggests large parts of Africa may not get COVID-19 vaccines for several years. Concerns grow about the variants of the coronavirus. There is evidence that some variants may be able to resist COVID-19 vaccines. But vaccine developers are already racing to modify existing vaccines to stay one step ahead of the virus. At the same time, the number of people being vaccinated worldwide is growing, although more quickly in some countries than others. Worldwide, more than 250 million people have received their first dose. <laughs>